All right, guys, so we are just going to go real quick. Stream of Consciousness here today, talking about Ghosts and Goblins Resurrection for the Switch. I am Jay. Welcome to Square Pegs. Nice to see you. Thanks for being here and checking out the video. Yeah, this is going to be completely unscripted and just off the cuff, because I have been playing Ghosts and Goblins Resurrection, and honestly, I didn't really know what to expect from it. All right, if you're new to the channel and haven't done so yet, please be sure to subscribe down below as I'm doing two videos like this a week. Well, not exactly. This is, this is, a, this is an aberration. I don't... I usually script out heavily, and I don't kind of babble like I am in this video, but you'll, you, you'll figure it out. I'm usually a lot more organized, but this game's a lot of fun, and I want to talk about it at 8 o'clock in the morning on a Sunday, which was probably a bad idea because I haven't had coffee yet, and I tend to ramble when I... Let's get to the review. Now, I, I hesitate to call this a review. This is more of a first impressions thing, because I've only been playing it for a few hours, and I am honestly never probably going to beat this game because I'm terrible at it, not for lack of trying, uh, as you will see in the video. But yeah, it's just something that I wanted to talk about real quick because I think it's kind of a remarkable game. Now, with Ghosts and Goblins and Ghouls and Ghosts, I can go one of two ways. If you guys have watched my Capcom tier ranker videos, I did one for the NES and one for the SNES. And to me, Ghosts and Goblins is an F. I do not enjoy it. I find it to be incredibly frustrating and without a lot of reward to it. Whereas with Ghouls and Ghosts, I'm pretty sure I gave that an S. And it's one of my favorite games on the, uh, on the Super Nintendo. And this game is right up there as far as that risk-reward level of satisfaction that Ghouls and Ghosts give you. So let's let's break it down a little bit. I'm going to go through this like I do with one of my reviews. I'm going to go over the, the, the three main areas. We're going to go over visuals, we're going to go over sound, and we're going to go over gameplay. Uh, I'm, I hesitate to go over aesthetics, although there are definitely some things we can talk about as far as unlockable. So we'll, we'll, we'll go over some aesthetics, but obviously it's a digital title, so I can't really do much with, like, you know box art or instruction manual or anything like that. But Capcom, if you are going to put out a physical one, I will happily do a review of that as well. So let's let's start off with graphics. Now I know for some people this look is going to be hard to digest because they're used to the sprite-based work that they have from previous Ghouls and Ghosts and Ghosts and Goblins games. And I gotta be honest with you guys, you need to get past that because when you stop and take a look at things, this game is gorgeous. The best way I can put it is it's put together like a puppet show, like a classic medieval puppet show where you have arms and legs that move independently of a body. And, and, and yeah, I know I'm kind of describing how human locomotion works too, but hear me out on this. So everything in the game feels like it has... You remember like in grade school when you have those those brass brads that you would put into things that were, when you're doing arts and crafts that would allow you to swing arms around? That's how everything feels in this game, and it feels like a papercraft version of Ghouls and Ghosts, which is pretty awesome when you stop and look at it because everything is put together on parchment and it's painted in as you load into the screen. So it feels like it's a papercraft version of the game. Not to the degree that like Paper Mario does or anything like that, but it does feel like it's made out of paper and I kind of love that. And on top of that, I really like the design of the creatures in the game. Nothing feels weird or out of place and they're, they're I mean you have to you have to either like you're either going to like or you're going to load the monsters because guess what there's a lot of them on screen at all times and it's kind of awesome it's really fun one of the other things I really like about the look is that everything kind of feels like a throwback to, to classic ghouls and ghosts and ghosts and goblins like there's there's loving remakes of previous levels with definitely its own spin on things. Like nothing is a one for one remake of, of levels you've previously played. But there's definitely some nods and some appreciation of previous games, and that's kind of cool. I do think that there's some really cool effects in the game. Like I, I really like the different magic spells that you can have. Like I've, I've so far I've unlocked three of them. I've got the fire shield, I've got the lightning bolt, and I have boulder, where you turn into a giant rock and roll back and forth. Which it's it's pretty cool. I kind of like that. I think they look really good. I think the effects play well on screen, and I, I kind of like the the giant squib explosions that happen when the bad guys die. Like, it's just this pile of gore that happens. It's disgusting and wonderful, and I kind of love it. Now, from a sound perspective, the game is great. I really love the music. It's kind of an orchestral masterpiece. Like, let's let's take a listen real quick. I don't know why I paused doing, <laughs> doing the audio for this one. I could just pause it in the edit. Anyway, yeah, so that happened. It's 8 o'clock in the morning on a Sunday, and I haven't had my coffee yet, so I apologize to you guys. I'm a dumbass in the morning. <laughs> I think the music is wonderful in this game. It fits each stage, and each stage has its own unique identity. 
and it's really moody and really it's just really great like I kind of love it and the sound effects in the game are great too like nothing is is overly done all the monsters kind of have their own their own sound they're, they're now there is one I, and I don't know if I, I'm going to have to go back and check the footage. I think I got it recorded, but there's one monster in particular in the, I want to say it's the, 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 the desert level that flies at you and makes this, this absolutely ridiculous noise. And I was laughing my head off when I was playing it, but it sounds great. And it's, it's funny and, you know, sometimes you need a little bit of levity in these games and that's, you get that. You've still got the classic sounds of when, when Arthur dies, he turns into a pile of bones, and it's that, that same, you know, wooden block sound that, you you know, the, when you were a kid in elementary school, you played the wooden blocks, you just drop a bunch of those on the floor, and that's what it sounds like when Arthur dies, and that's great. And the monster sounds are wonderful, and the attack sounds are awesome, and the, the magic sounds are great. It, top to bottom, it just sounds fantastic. Now, from a gameplay perspective, this is where it's going to be more of a mixed bag for people, because it is decidedly difficult. This is 100% a hard-ass game. It is not messing around. This isn't something where you're going to be able to ease into it and eventually you're going to be okay at the game. No, it's pretty much from jump going to kick you in the teeth. It is it is a properly difficult game. And I'm playing on the second easiest difficulty. I'm playing on Squire and there's four difficulty levels and I can't imagine playing on the hardest level right now because I am struggling to get through levels. And now, this is with the caveat of me being absolutely horrific at Ghosts and Goblins and Ghouls and Ghost Games, but be aware, it's hard. It is super hard, and if you get frustrated at games that have a high kill ratio, you're going to get frustrated at this game. I know I have at times, but, you know, I've had it for three days now, and I keep coming back to it to beat it. Um, for, for instance, you're going to see here, I'm fighting the Cerberus boss at the end of the second level, and this guy must have killed me 35 times yesterday, and I finally just threw my hands up and put the, put the switch down and went to bed, and this morning I got up and I beat him in five minutes. So, like everything with Ghosts and Goblins and Ghouls and Ghosts, it's all about learning the patterns and learning the repetition. And eventually, one of the things I really like, you'll see here, is the game gives you advice. So it'll start teaching you how to beat the more difficult areas, especially with the bosses. Like, if you're just an idiot and you can't make a jump, it's not going to tell you, hey, you should jump better. But in situations like this where I'm fighting Cerberus, I kept dying at different stages. Like, I would... I would die almost immediately when I started and I'd be like, hey, you should you keep an eye out for this. And then I'd get to another spot and I'd be, hey, keep an eye out for this and you'll, you'll get there. And now you'll see here, I'm right at the end and I'm just about to beat him and I can't quite, quite get there. And it tells me, watch out for when he retracts his claws because that means he's going to attack. And that means I know when to dodge. So it's helping you with pattern recognition, which I think is pretty awesome. Especially in a game this difficult, it's nice that it's not solving the problem for you but it's giving you the option on how to do it. Now, in that case as well, it also does give you the ability to solve the problem for you, because you can restart areas of the game with easier difficulty levels. And there's nothing wrong with that. Like, I, there, there's definitely uh, some merit there. I haven't done it myself, but I, I, I will. I can tell you I will, because I was very close with Cerberus to, to doing that. There's a ton of weapons in the game for you to unlock. It is missing the double jump, which kind of sucks. Uh, it does make navigating some areas of the game a little bit difficult, but, uh, you know, I I want it, but I don't know that I need it because, I mean, I'm just used to super ghouls and ghosts, so this is something where it's, it's a familiarity that I'm wanting, and this is a different game, and I need to remember that. This isn't the same thing I've always played. This is something brand new, all new, all different, and completely, completely awesome. One of the things I really like about the game as well is there are secret areas to find. Like you, you see here, I found I found this secret area where I fell into a room full of uh, full of zombies, which is pretty cool. And I had to defeat wave after wave of zombie, and I got some treasure. I also really like that before you go into a level, you can choose which path you want to go to. In some cases, like for the first two zones, you're able to choose from two different levels. Now in the third one, which I I just got to because I finally beat Cerberus. Uh, there, there's no choosing. You know, I'm on one path, and that's the direction I have to go, and that's okay. But I do like that you're able to kind of, as they call it, pick your poison and see which way you want to go. And boy, that is a, a fitting, fitting statement. And don't be afraid if you're if you're in a situation where you're playing the game and one level is too difficult. Like for me, in the second zone, you're able to choose from a desert region and an ice region, and the ice region was just kicking my butt up around my shoulders, and I just couldn't do it. So I finally, I just said, you know what, screw it, we're going to try the desert region and see how that goes. And I was able to get through it, and I was, I had more fun playing it that way. So don't think you're locked in to a particular zone. You can change your mind and go back and switch it out. 
And I don't remember the point I was going to make here because, again, this is just a stream of consciousness thing, but... Oh! Oh, that's what it was! I love the addition of checkpoints into the game, and I like that you're able to start back from different checkpoints as you go, and you're able to kind of switch the difficulty there. If you keep continuously dying, this is the thing I was talking about with changing the difficulty, you'll have the option to restart at a checkpoint and start at a lower difficulty level, which I think is pretty nice. There's a lot of attention to gamers in this game that Capcom put in that I wasn't expecting. And that's kind of nice, and I'm hoping this is a trend for future releases from them, because there's such a wide array of IP that Capcom just kind of leaves on the shelf, they don't do a whole lot with. Like, I would love to see them take another stab at Strider, or Gunsmoke, or 1942, or something like that, and just ratchet that difficulty through the roof, but put stuff like this in there, where you're able to tune it down and play at a pace that's more logical to you, and to the way you want to experience the game. Now, from an aesthetics... Oh, that's what I was going to talk about. <laughs> uh, one of the things I really like... Yes, yeah, so, like I said, stream of consciousness, guys. One of the things I really, really like about this game are the unlockables. Like, if you remember in Ghouls and Ghosts, you actually have magic spells. And you can get those in this game as well, but you have to unlock them. And you have to unlock them by finding the Umbral Bees. To find the Umbral Bees, they're either just flying around in the level, or you have to perform a particular action to get them to appear on screen. But nothing like, you know, you, you don't have to input the Konami code in the middle of a fight or anything like that. It's just like, oh, you know, you know Ghosts and Goblins. If you throw your weapon in a certain spot and it makes a different sound, either a treasure chest is going to pop out or the magician turning turn you into a frog, or you're going to get one of these Umbral Bees to show up. And the Umbral Bees are used to unlock the magic spells, which is pretty awesome. This is the Umbral Tree, and this is what you collect the Umbral Bees for. This is where you unlock your magic. You see here the little baubles that are on the tree. These are the different spells you can get. There's all kinds of stuff that you can unlock, and it's pretty cool. Like, I've, I've, I've got a bunch of them now that you haven't seen in-game yet, uh, just because I, I just unlocked them after I stopped recording. From aesthetic perspective, I mean, again, it is a digital title, so there's not going to be a ton of it, but I think decisions like the menus being on this paper to look like, you know, weathered parchment, and everything looks like a painting or a drawing... Alright guys, that's going to do it for this video, but now I want to hear from you in the comments down below. Let me know what game from Capcom's IP past you would love to see them remake in a vision kind of like Ghosts and Goblins Resurrection. Personally, like I said, I would love to see Strider or Gunsmoke or 1942 come back, something like that. But I think Bionic Commando done like this could be really cool too. Lean into the 80s aesthetic like they did with Double Dragon Neon or, or Far Cry Blood Dragon. You know, just really embrace that vaporwave look. I think you could have something really special with Bionic Commando. But let me know in the comments down below what IP you would like to see return. If you enjoyed this video and want me to do more stream of consciousness reviews of games in the future, uh, give it a thumbs up down below and I'll be sure to do that. And if you enjoyed today's video and have yet to do so, please be sure to subscribe down below. And while you're there, ring the notification bell so you can stay up to date with everything we've got going on. Until next time, guys, I have been Jay. I appreciate you spending a little bit of time with me here this Monday morning as we look at Ghosts and Goblins Resurrection on the Switch. Until next time, remember to play more games, stay square, and take care. I'll talk to you soon.